सदा शिव सरंभा शंकराचार्यमध्यमाचार्यपर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा मूक कौति वाचालंघयते गिरीपातमह वंदे परमाधव So we were looking at the fourth chapter. In that, Bhagwan revealed us the nature of karma, and also he corrected our erroneous notions regarding karma and akarma. Normal people see karma where there is akarma, and see akarma where there is karma. that is the problem with ajnanis so bhagwan pointed out that a jnani sees akarma where there is karma and karma where there is akarma is the one who is able to see this how can one see this means one has to know the atma itself as akarta the all the kartritvam is there only in the prakriti only the guna guna gunas themselves act amongst themselves and that's what all activities and karma etc that only therefore atma is akarta so that way he instructed us how this nature of karma is and then he a few verses we saw the uh, how a jnani sees karma and karaka sthams correct in that context of course he even described different lifestyles of jnanis even though one may be highly involved in activity that doesn't mean that that person is doing anything or some other person may have a very uh, uh, only a life of recluse or whatever correct not doing much and uh, doing only that which is required to maintain the body like that also one can live whichever way you live you are not a karta that is the main thing and even if a jnani is doing all sorts of yajna every day also even then that is not going to accrue any papa or punya to the jnani because the jnani knows aham akarta in this context bhagwan introduced yajna and then used yajna itself as an analogy to show how each and every karaka which is associated with a karma with an action is all brahman only they are not separate from brahman so the jnani sees all the karakas also as brahman alone that is the famous verse brahmarpanam brahma vihi brahma agnau brahmana hutam brahmaiva tena gantavyam brahma karma samadhina so having said this then bhagwan talked about how uh, the karma yogis do yajna and how the sanyasis or jnana yogis do yajna so the karma yogis are still doing yajna uh, offering to devatas only but they are not doing it for the karma phala itself but still for a karma yogi the devata is separate i am separate they are doing that for chitta shuddhi but still the vision is like that correct but the jnana yogis or even sanyasis what they do they offer themselves to the fire of brahman the brahma gnanam the brahma gnanam itself is the agni for them correct brahma gnau apare like that bhagavan says yagne yagnyam yagnena eva upajukpati so here bhashakara takes yagnyam as the as the uh, ahankara so one's own ahankara has to be offered into the fire of the brahma gnanam so that's what i always say that we have to see that the very individuality or even the i thought is not intrinsic to me it is all only transient the i thought also is only a thought in your mind even when there is no i thought i am there <laughs> that is the real me so that's why many people even talk about you have to find the source of the i thought also the source of the i thought is nothing but chaitanya only 
and that chaitanyam is the invariable in each and every state of, of experience which we have. So that's why the one who offers this ahankara itself by, by oneself again. Yajnena yajnyam upajukvati means you offer it to yourself. So that is how the jnanis are, even sannyasis, they do the, the yajna. Having said this, now Bhagavan goes on to give different yajnas. We started that yesterday, correct? Different types of yajnas. All these yajnas are all disciplines. Any yajna here, Bhagavan mentions, is a certain discipline which helps you to gain a certain mental disposition, you can say. Particularly the Shamadi Shatka Sampatti we talk about, correct? When we talk about the Sadhana Chatushtayam, the major effort where we have to put is in Shamadi Shatka Sampatti. For that only you have to lead a disciplined life. Of course, you also have to cultivate certain values and attitudes. Those are only going to cognitively change. So as a Mumukshu, a certain level of Nitya Nitya Vastu Viveka and Vairagya you should have. But even Vairagya also can be a process, correct? Because we are all used to so many things. Straight away, you, are, you may not be able to, even though you know that certain things are not really necessary for you, it may not be easy for you to stop consuming and all that. Because we are all used to a certain way of consuming things. And uh, it's not going to happen overnight. There also certain discipline is required. So, both, I would say the Nitya Nitya Vastu Vega and Mukshutam are purely a cognitive thing. In fact, they are the starting point. You should start from there. But the rest of the things have to be cultivated. And uh, over a period of time, it will come. If you have enough interest in moksha, if you think that that is the only thing for you, the rest of the things have to follow. There is no doubt about that. But it may you have to put in some effort over a period of time. That is the disciplined life we are talking about. So that will help you to have Vairagya and also the Shamadi Shatka Sampattihi. In this context only, Bhagavan is listing all these different yajnas here. Starting with Shrotradi Indriyanani. Shrotradi Indriyani, correct? Shrotra Adi Padad, you have to take all other Indriyas also here. And they offer it to the fire of self-mastery, I said. Sayyama means self-mastery. That means here you can say these people are more advanced. Those who are offering the Indriyas themselves to the fire of self-mastery means they, they have a certain Shama, you can say. Their mind itself is already tranquil. They are not bothered by the activities of Indriya or they have managed to withdraw their Indriyas successfully. Or that's what they are doing. At, at least that is their discipline. The other part, the next one is Shabdadi Vishayan Anye. Others, what do they do? They offer the Shabdadi Vishayas to the Indriyagni. This can mean even normal people, because normal people are also only engaged in uh, the Indriyas going after the Indriya Vishaya, correct? That way we can see, but the other one we can tell here is since Bhagavan is talking about disciplines here. So if you take the Shabdadin Vishayan Indriya Agnisha Jukhvati like that, if that is going to be a Yajna, then we can look at it differently also. In fact, Bhashakara says that in this case, it is like even though you are Consuming the Indriya Vishayas, you have not stopped that, but you do it with a discipline again there. What you consume has to be proper. Is that clear? Because like I said, straight away you cannot withdraw all your Indriyas and sit like a tortoise and all that, although that analogy is given. So where do you start? Even when I talked about Shamadi Shatka Sampati, I said Shama you may not have or most of the people do not have. But you start with Dhamma, correct? Because the Bahya Indriya Nigraha is what we can start with. Then you can work on yourself so that you gain a certain self-mastery and a certain disposition of mind, correct? A tranquil mind. 
Similarly, here also, straight away you cannot stop going after the Indriya Vishya, correct? But what you can do is, you can still follow a certain discipline, correct? What I will eat? Or I will eat only at this time of the day. Or even if you are having some entertainment, I will only watch TV for half an hour every day. Things like that. Instead of just binging on some Netflix and all that, that's what people do, correct? Nowadays, everything is a binge. Whether you go for shopping means, they even call it retail therapy and all that. I don't know why, but they have interesting terminology for all these things. But the idea is that you are binging on food or you are binging on uh, shopping and going to mall and all that or you are just sitting in your home and watching season after season of some serial or other. So these are all like, you are just going after the Indriya Vishaya only, correct? There is no discipline there. But let us say you have a certain regimen every day that I will do only this much. You still, you regulate your consumption. That also is a discipline, correct? You can start from there. Then slowly, you can stop completely also over a period of time. Certain things you can just, it will fall off also, I think. So like that, the, the others, so the second line in the 26th verse can be taken as Dhamma, those who are practicing Dhamma. The first line is, you can say they are, they are already, they have a certain uh, maturity, and self-mastery, so they are now more focused on not allowing the Indriyas to go out only and keep them withdrawn. Then, the so these two are Karma Yogis. The 27 also I think we saw. Sarvani Indriya Karmani, Prana Karmani Cha Apare, Atma Sanyama Yoga Agnav Jukhvati Jnana Deepite. So this can be taken as sannyasis because sannyasis have, have given up all activities and all that already. They have given up all roles. They have a certain life where they are only focused on maybe dhyanam and uh, self-mastery. Correct? Here also Atma Sanyama is talked about and all the, and they have also anyway uh, not doing Many of the activities which a normal householder has to do. Those things they are not doing. So all the Indriya Karma and even Prana Karma, they are only offering it to their, the fire of self-mastery means they are very highly regulated life. That means. So their disciplines are more extreme. The sannyasis disciplines are, they are only sitting and doing dhanam all the time almost. And only do whatever is necessary to maintain the body. So, such a lifestyle, you can say, that is also a highly disciplined and regulated lifestyle that Bhagavan is talking about that as a yajna in the 27th verse. Then I think this was the last one we saw. Dravya yajna, stapo yajna, yoga yajna, statha pare. Here Bhagavan is saying many things, correct? Dravya yajna means those who distribute wealth and all that I told you. Again, if you are do, you have to do it as a yajna means there is also a religious aspect involved in this. It's not that just you are doing some social service itself is a dravya yajna, but it also has to be done as a yajna. In fact, you have to consider that even giving is some kind of an offering to Bhagavan. It's not that you are giving to just boost your ego or anything, right? Because some people uh, just that to show that they are doing some uh, seva and all that also people can do. I am not saying everybody is doing like that, but there is a big possibility, particularly in the Western all it is there. <laughs> I have seen many people in the US and all, they do like that. Because it, it is a certain, like I have given so much for charity also is some kind of a thing in their resume and all that, correct? It adds up to, or even if they are going for some office and all that, they are standing in election means you have to show something. They build up all that. <laughs> over a period of time that I have done this, that, etc. So there it is not yajna. Here yajna means these are all, again we have to assume that they are all mukshus and karma yogi because the, the topic under discussion itself is only the, uh, what is the nature of karma and then we are also talking about yogis only here. 
So even the dravya yajna is done by a karma yogi, we have to take. Means either they are doing, uh, generally they are doing some yajna and distributing a lot, or even when you go to tirtha sthanas and all that, we are supposed to do all this dhanam and all that, correct? So, but all that you do as an offering to Bhagavan, okay? And also you are you are doing it not just for punya. That also is a form of that the fact that you are able to give itself is showing that you don't have a certain insecurity, correct? Because to give something, you should already be feeling secure. So the giving is only a uh, it is coming not from because some people. If you are giving for some ego boost and all, that means you are basically trading one thing for another, correct? There are also some insecurity is there. But genuinely, if you are giving means you just give because somebody deserves that. So it has to come from there and you are also not feeling any insecurity or anything. And it is given, finally it has to be given also as an offering. You have to feel blessed that you are able to give. The receiver also should feel good about receiving from you. They should not feel bad about receiving. These are all some important things, correct? So, this distribution of wealth and others do a lot of religious disciplines are there. If you take even today, those things are there in our culture, correct? Like somebody is fasting for Shashti, Ekadashi Vratam, Somavara Vratam. Like that, so many religious disciplines you can take up Mostly women do all these things more than men. But uh, but all this tapo yajnaha means those who are doing all these religious disciplines, that also is going to help you. Okay, And others take up to Ashtanga Yoga. Yoga yajnaha. Ashtanga Yoga also again you do as a mumukshu. Not just for some flexibility of your body or for health and all that. Understand that. So... That is important and other people do Swadhyaya Jnana Yajna that I told you that that Swadhyaya Pravachana Abhyam Na Pramaditavyam is a Vedic dictum for us. So every day you have to do Swadhyaya but that itself they are doing it like a Yajna. In fact there is there was even a Nain Mar called I think Rudra Pashupati Nain Mar. Correct? He used to chant only Rudram every day. I don't know how many times. <laughs> So then by chanting that only, he attained Shiva and all that and he became an Ayan Mark. You can go and see his story. So when I read this, Vadhyaya Jnana Yajna, I thought about that Ayan Mark. So like that people like that are there. And all these people are all Yatayaha, means they are all Yatana Shila. Because any discipline involves effort, correct? It's not easy, you have to put in effort. So continuing here, Apane jukhvati pranam prane panan tathapare prana panagati rudva pranayama parayana. So now Bhagavan is talking about pranayama itself as a yajna. Because some people only do pranayama, correct? They are experts in pranayama, they are committed to pranayama. So such people are called here as pranayama parayana. Bhagavan says pranayama. Parayana means the pranayama itself becomes paramayanam for them. Means that is their main activity or goal. Or... So they are committed to pranayama at least for a period. Since these people are also karma yogis and mumukshus, they are doing it for a particular reason we have to take. Because generally the way to, to having a certain tranquil mind is through your breath. So that's why... Even traditionally, before any japa, you have to do pranayama. Correct? Even every day before Gayatri japa, you have to do 10 pranayamas. Most people nowadays don't do it properly. They just do things like this. Within one minute, you finish 10. That's not the idea. Even that, there are actually, if you read the Shastra, they say what the, the pranayama mantra is there. Correct? Om Bhuhu, Goa, Swa, Maha, Tapa and all that. So, how you have, what you have to chant while taking the breath in. Then, one second you have to hold. Then, what you have to chant when you are leaving the breath through the other nostrils. Because you are taking in pranayama, at least traditionally we take the inhalation through this right nasal cavity. 
then exhalation through the left and all that, correct? We close like this and exhalation will go this side. Or you do the other way around or what? You do this way? Or you can do both, I think, alternatively. If it is 10 is there, 5 you do like this, 5 the other way also you can do. So, but while doing inhalation and exhalation and that holding for a bit, all that is mentioned. So, if you do like that, you cannot, but mostly nobody does it in coordination with the breath nowadays. They simply chant the mantra very fast and then they are only counting how many times they are doing and not the process itself is lost. But you have to do the pranayama properly. While doing pranayama also, prana vikshanam also is important that you watch the breath. Because the idea is that otherwise mind is going here and there, correct? The, you, you make the mind watch something mechanical means automatically it will, it will become tranquil or it will calm down. It's not just going around here and there, correct? So you make the mind to watch some physiological activity which is happening in your body. Make it focus on that means it will automatically calm down. That is the whole idea. But anyway, the pranayama itself here, Bhagavan, how does he say that? He says, uh, prana pana gati rudva. Correct? Means you are in pranayama. The prana means pragamana vayu, you say. And apana means adogamana vayu. So the inhalation is called apana because the air is going down. And exhalation means air is going up and out. That is pragamana vayu. So prana is exhalation, apana is inhalation. And in pranayama, generally what we say is, whenever you, are, you fill your lungs, correct? You take a deep breath and fill your lungs, that is called puraka. Means you are filling your lungs and stomach and all with air. Puraka. Then when you give up all the air, correct? The prana takes it all away and then everything is empty means that is called rechaka. So there is puraka and rechaka and there is something called kumbhaka also, where you, that air you retain in your stomach and lungs, that is called kumbhaka. Kumbha means pot, correct? It is like holding something in the pot, means kumbhaka also you do that, you are holding it. In fact, there is a, even in that, I think there is something called Bahish Kumbhaka, Antar, Antar Kumbhaka and all that. Antar Kumbhaka means when you take the air in and you just hold it, it is called Antar Kumbhaka. When you leave out the air and still hold, that is called Bahish Kumbhaka. So this Puraka, Rejaka, Kumbhaka, also you are doing as a prana, when you are practicing pranayama, you do it in a certain manner, correct? You take a deep breath. And then for so many counts, you have to hold it. That is the kumbhaka you have to do. Again, at that time, Bhagavan is saying, that's what he is saying here. That is the prana pana gati rudva, he says. That, see, normally nobody is breathing consciously. Right? Breathing is the most uh, subconscious or unconscious activity we are doing. But now in pranayama, the whole idea is you are always breathing consciously. <laughs> Means your, your mind is focused on the breathing itself. That's how the prana is anyway controlled, uh, connected to the mind. And that's how we are trying to have a certain mastery over our mind. So in this case, the breathing in also you are conscious and how long you breathe in and all it is there. Right? You have to breathe in a deep breath means there is a certain time and all is involved in that. Or you chant a certain mantra. That's why the timing is maintained because they say that this first pada you have to chant while you are breathing in. Then hold the breath and chant the next two father. <laughs> then again you leave the breath out and chant the other pada like that. You can also connect it with some mantra. When you do like that, you are you are actually the you are uh, regulating the inhalation and exhalation. Correct. That is the prana pana gati rudva means basically you are regulating the flow of the breath. And when you are doing that, what Bhagavan, Bhagavan says, what is the yajna here? Apane Jukhvati Pranam. And Prane Panam Tathapare. So Tathapare means that 
since you have said the before whatever some of some other people what do they do apane jukhati pranam prane apanam jukhati like that we have to take it see the idea here is that's what the kumbhaka is there correct you take the breath in that is apana then you hold that apana air is only sitting in your stomach and then you offer it to the prana means you you let it out that is the apane jukhati pranam so you take the apana and offer it to prana then whatever you have left out also again kumbhaka then that air which has gone out that prana again you offer to apana means you are taking it back in this whole process you keep on doing consciously correct for a period of time that is the pranayama pranayama yajna that itself is a yajna it's a discipline and it it has its benefits like i told you it helps you to have a certain tranquil mind and also health wise also bodily also there is lot of benefits are there when you breathe consciously like this so those who do such a yajna here uh, they are talking about pranayama parayana ha then others apare niyata hara ha prana pranan praneshu jukvati sarve pyete yajna vidaha yajna kshapita kalmasha ha so others what they do niyata hara ha in fact this niyata hara is a big thing nowadays all people are talking about intermittent fasting this dieting that dieting so many things are there a lot of people are following it has certain benefits also we cannot deny that so this kind of niyata ahara means what they decide that only so much i will eat or you can take this in a different manner also instead of food if you want ahara means ahriyate iti ahara correct whatever you take in or whatever you consume is ahara in some context ahara can also mean all the indriya vishayas which you uh, which you take in through any indriya also can be called ahara understand but i think here particularly here food only is called ahara because food food also we consume and take it into our stomach and so this ahara only pranan praneshu jukhvati means basically you are offering it to your prana only correct that i i said that even every day when we do all this we even have something called parisheshanam and all that correct you actually whenever we eat uh, we say some mantra and offer each five times you are offering each morsel is for one prana prana apana vyana udana samana like that that is what is called pranagni hotram so so eating itself is supposed to be a yajna only that practice many people have but here it is little bit more than that as a discipline what you eat also you have to be very careful so you have certain restrictions that i will eat only one time a day or i will or even like when you go to kashi you have to leave something correct that is normally there so whenever we go to kashi and do whatever rituals as part of that they say that you have to then take a vow that you will never eat one vegetable one fruit and something like that in different categories you have to give up eating something but people are very intelligent nowadays they will they will leave some very rare thing like vilambalatha udita when do you have vilambalam anyway <laughs> vilambalam means wood apple there is a fruit called wood apple that that normally during <laughs> some rituals only we even make that generally nobody eats it i have a couple of trees of that also but i have not got the fruits yet but it's actually an interesting fruit if you go to sri lanka they sell wood apple juice it's pretty good actually okay but anyway so they they select something very rare like that and they will live that's not the idea because in those days by the time you do kashi yatra you are supposed to be already a mature person and you are supposed to give up whatever you really like in fact that is a way of again gaining mastery over your ragadvesha only for that only our ancestors have kept such rituals and all that correct such vrata but that also has become very symbolic now 
So you even that Vadyar, whoever the priest who is conducting, he also knows. He'll say, okay, you can choose this. This is not <laughs> very this is not very common, so you will not face any problem means. <laughs> but anyway, so the the niyata ahara means you have certain rules about what you will eat. Of course, those things can vary from from uh, different places also, what kind of niyata ahara, ahara you do. Uh, because it depends on uh, in South or North and all that, what you eat. So being in South and giving up uh, chapati or roti is not a big deal, correct? Any, anyway, we don't make all that. So like that, you have to have a certain discipline in eating. That itself is a yajna. And also you are doing it as a yajna. It is not just uh, some dieting or fasting and all that for the purpose of health and all that. This is more like you are again gaining a certain self-mastery, correct? By by regulating the eating. And this also has to be done as a yajna means again Ishwarapana Buddhi has to be there. Some prayers can be there or even like uh, some specific uh, yajna as, as I said. So this is presented as an yajna means both prayers and the right attitude of Ishwarapana has to be there, even when you are doing this uh, regulated eating, let us say. So, now Bhagavan is summarizing. He says, all the people whom I have mentioned now, those who are doing all these different yajnas, sarve api, all these people, everybody, yete yajna vidaha, so those who know and practice all these yajnas, correct? These are all yajna vidaha. These people are all doing different yajnas, and all of them, what all of them who observe these different religious disciplines, yajna vidaha, and what uh, without any exception, in fact, <laughs> they are all there, yajna vidaha, and yajna shapita kalmasha. Kalmasham means again uh, some kind of papa, also we can say, or impurity. Mala. Kalmasha means. Uh, impurity because here everybody mostly one of the things only I said is a sannyasi, but others are all karma yogi means they are doing it for chitta shuddhi. Means here kalmasham also again we have to take it as ragadvesha only. So their ragadveshas, their kalmashas are shapita means what they are removed or destroyed by the yajna itself. Whatever yajna, the discipline they are following, that itself will destroy for all these people their. Kalmasha, like that. Bhagwan uh, says here, Sarve Pyete Yajna Vidaha Yajna Kshapita Kalmasha. So, this is something we have to understand. And so, in this manner, all these people are basically gaining the Shamadamadi Shatka Sampati. Understand that? Because we have to always connect it with uh, Moksha. And the sadhana chatushtaya only. Any sadhana is for the sadhana chatushtaya sampatti only. To gain the sadhana chatushtaya. Now, Bhagavan is now going to praise all these yajnas in the next verse. So, interestingly, you have to understand, sometimes people get carried away by all this praise. And ninda also will be there. That is the beauty. In fact, in the next two, two verses, the beauty is that the first verse is the praise of all these yajnas. Immediately there is a ninda also saying that uh, you have to know that all these are only karma jan. They are all, they are all only born of karma. So like this, uh, this, this will give this praise and ninda together should give us the proper attitude towards all these practices. That also is important. Otherwise, you should not think these practices themselves are the end. Correct? Some people become like that. They are doing only pranayama the whole life. And they don't want to do anything else. It's like you are always, like I said, correct? You never want to leave 8th grade or something. You, you want to stay in the same school, same class. You don't want to go to any other class or graduate from even middle school. So that's not the idea, correct? So anyway, so here we see Yajna Shishta Amrita Bhujaha Yanti Brahma Sanatanam 
நாயம் லோகோஸ்திய யஜ்யஸ்ய புதோன்யஹ்குரு சத்தம ஓ சாரி ஐ திங்க் ஐ வென்ட் டு த நோ தட் இஸ் ஆல் கரெக்ட் சோ ஹி சேஸ் யாந்தி பிரம்ம சனாதனம் யஜ்யசிஷ்டா மிருத புஜா சோ யஜ்யசிஷ்டா மீன்ஸ் வாட் வாட் எவர் இஸ் லெஃப்ட் அவுட் ஆஃப்டர் த யஜ்யா means you are following a certain discipline and after that in that of course it is an offering to bhagavan and then after we after after offer to bhagavan whatever is there that offering anyway bhagavan is only paroksha priya correct <laughs> bhagavan is not literally consuming your offer unless you offer it into a fire itself but even in that case we do not normally even in a yajna or a homa we do not offer everything into the fire we always keep something Uh, uh, like we we keep something without offering also that is called the yajna shesha that's what is given as a prasada and all that correct so here yajna shishtam means that which is left over after you have done the yajna after you have done the offering to bhagavan that itself is called amrita here by bhagavan correct yajna shishta amrita means amritam means here the prasada only is called as amrita and the one who consumes that yajna shishta amrita puja means all these people who are doing all these different types of yajna and they are consuming the yajna shishta or whatever is left over after the offering and because of that what is the phala bhagavan prays is saying yanti brahma sanatanam they all attain to this sanatanam brahma this nityam brahma so even though whatever they are doing all this yajna are only karma correct right? karma itself is limited but still because they are doing it as yogis indirectly it is helping them to attain brahman itself brahma sanatanam they gain they attain to that and further what now he is contrasting that with those who do not do any yajna So that way also he is praising that you have to do some discipline has to be there in life particularly as a student of vedanta it's very important that daily your day to day life itself has to have a certain regimen and discipline and whatever you are doing in your day to day life also is an offering to bhagavan that also is very important that attitude can never go away that way only it becomes karma yoga but if somebody is not doing all these things now what is his what happens to him means nayam loko asti ayagnyasya ayagnyasya means the, those who do not do any yajna means they do not lead a very disciplined life they are just going after whatever the worldly pursuits go, uh, going after sense objects that's all they are just going along with their natural tendencies for that person na ayam lokah also is not there he says this loka also they are they are not going to enjoy they will get into troubles only and then kutonya purusattama then what to talk about the anya means the other loka means the paraloka also because if you are only going according to your indriya uh, uh, whatever the so the nature of your indriyas and going after indriya vishayas most probably you will, you will end up doing papa understand because you are going according to your likes and dislikes that will only drag you to do wrong things and you are going to accumulate papa with, with such a thing then you are also not, not going to get a good gati after this life is ends up and in this life also you are not going to be very happy so bhagwan clearly says i am lokaha nasti then what to talk about the other one he says kutaha <laughs> anya nothing to talk about the other he cannot gain anything in the other world also he kurusattama means kurusattama means you can say you, you, the best among the kurus okay kurusattama tama sattama he is the best really this so like this bhagwan has now praised all these yajnas that they are sadhana for gaining brahma itself not sakshat karanam but they indirectly help you to gain the samadhi shatka sampatti hi vairagyam all these things 
therefore it is aiding you in attaining this brahman itself which is the limitless if you don't attain brahman means your loss also is limitless correct iha ched avedit atha satyam asti na ched iha avedin mahati vinashtihi like that the keno upanishad says so if you manage to know this brahman here then atha satyam asti means what no, you you have become the satya vastu itself correct satyam jnanam anantam brahma otherwise what nache diha vedi mahati vinashtihi if you do not know that here then the loss is mahati only the loss also is infinite limitless so like that one has to understand all these things so that you follow some discipline bhagwan is praising this here because he wants everybody to lead a disciplined life and also do things with an attitude of yoga now continuing now but now immediately ninda also is done to show that you have to still pursue jnanam these them these things themselves are not an end they are only a means that's what one has to understand so next verse is what evam bahuvidha yajnaha vitata brahmano mukhe karmajan vidhitan sarvan evam jnatva vimokshyase so it is said here brahmanaha mukhe is there so brahmanaha can be taken as brahma ji or veda the word brahma can mean veda also and in this context it is appropriate to take it as veda brahmanaha mukhe means from the mouth of the veda itself what has come out bahuvida yajnaha vitata okay so many bahuvida means many and variegated are varied correct because the veda is full of many different yajnas and karma correct different rituals are prescribed in the veda so bahuvidaha yajnaha they have all been mentioned in the veda elaborately vitata so in this manner all these different yajnas are mentioned in the veda but what should you know about them karma jan vidhi tan sarvan tan sarvan karma jan but all of them are only born out of karma means they are all anatma you have to see them only as akarma only in reality so they are all born out of karma and even while doing them you should have a certain bhavana as akarta so once if you have that correct attitude towards karma evam jnatva vimokshase bhagavan says so you have to see them as karma jan and then and it's not connected to you they are all anatma the karma is there only in anatma and you are akarta that is your nature because the whole topic under discussion is karma and akarma here so bhagavan again says all these yajnas mentioned in the vedas and all the disciplines i have said till now are also only anatma or karma and don't see put your kartritvam there while doing it you are still akarta you have to still see yourself as akarta only and therefore even while doing that you are not doing anything so karmani akarma yap pashyet has to be there here that's why he is specifically saying these are all karma jan and therefore what by knowing that you are freed evam jnatva vimokshyase so like this you can see he has beautifully first he praised all the yajnas but then he is also saying that they are all only born out of karma and you have to see them for what they are so you have to be objective towards these things so don't take the means themselves as an end that is important here so now finally what bhagwan is talking about he is going to say the jnana yajna itself is the greatest because all these other yajnas why you are doing to prepare yourself for jnana correct that is the whole idea that is the step by step whatever our 
tradition has given us is that you grow in a step by step manner gain certain maturity gain chitta shuddhi gain chitta naishtalyam then you have to get this jnanam so now next verse we will see shreyan dravyamaya dhyajnat jnana yajna parantapa sarvam karma khilam partha jnane parisamapyate so very clearly bhagwan has taken us here beautifully he parantapa means one who destroys his foes okay his enemies or scorches his enemies or burns his enemies parantapa he parantapa dravya maya yajna okay so compared to the dravya maya yajna because all the yajnas which uh, which were mentioned before they involve some materials correct and so all these dravya maya yajna they are all for your growth no doubt but they are only means for gaining this jnana therefore bhagwan here clearly says the the jnana yajna is shreya means what it is it is better than all this dravya maya yajna so once you become qualified for jnana you should not be still holding on to all these things that is the idea like even in the sadhana sadhana panchakam also he says you give, give up you give up everything and leave your home and go away correct right? once you have gained a certain certain maturity you should be able to give up whatever you have been doing and move on to a better thing so that's why bhagwan here says you are doing all these dravya maya yajnas i only told you in fact they are also going to lead you to only brahman yanti brahma sanatanam also but it will only lead one if you leave them and come to jnana yajna not that you just hold on to all these practices and your whole lifetime is over means only next lifetime of course that also bhagwan gives <laughs> some assurance as i told you hopefully in the next lifetime then you have to continue otherwise but here bhagwan is very clear he says dravya maya yajna jnana yajna ha shreyan parantapa so jnana yajna is better it is superior like that we can take and so you have to you have to come to this jnanam because jnana deva kaivalyam correct nanya pantha vimuktaye we have seen all these things so bhagwan himself has listed so many different ways in which you can prepare yourself for this jnana this is the analogy puja swamiji also gives i told you correct you can reach tirupati temple in hundreds of ways but once you are there there is only one garbhagraha one door through that only you have to see like that you prepare yourself whichever is relevant to you to your your varna or ashrama whatever or your what the your stage of your life and wherever you find yourself in life based on that you have to have a disciplined life whatever it is and then this disciplined life has to prepare you for jnana and you have to pursue jnana without pursuing jnanam there is no moksha that means you any whether you are a karma yogi or sanyasi basically you have chosen a certain lifestyle only to do shravana manana nididhyasana understand that that you can never bypass or anything like that so you have to study the shastra you have to go to a guru those things you can never bypass so here bhagwan explicitly explicitly that's why he is now goading you to say and says that this jnana yajna now you have to take up because that is superior and what he says sarvam karma akhilam partha jnane parisamapyate so you, you cannot say any more than this correct right? he says all the karma you do they have to end up in jnana only correct right? they, they are all for the purpose of gaining jnana in fact so you cannot lose sight of that any karma you do they all have to resolve finally into jnana alone because that is the goal because our whole problem is one of ignorance like i have already told you 
so that's why we should not be confused by uh, different see because many times they say this vedanta is only theory so puji swamiji used to ask okay this is black correct how do you know if you say my eyes are showing me that this is black now that is theory or practice tell me there is no theory or practice or anything correct it is knowledge the means of knowledge is giving you knowledge that's all it is not a theory nor there is nothing to practice there similarly veda is revealing your true nature there is no theory or practice or anything you have to just see that you have to cognize it and if you are able to cognize it and if it transforms you nothing else needs to be done correct there is nothing more to be done the jnana itself is moksha there is no gap between that you have to gain some jnanam and then afterwards you have to do something or anything like that. whatever is required to gain this knowledge you do that up to that your effort is involved but in jnanam itself there is no effort understand that the important thing we have to understand is for karma your free will is always involved that's why we say it is purusha tantram all karma is purusha tantram because kartum shakyate akartum shakyate anyatha va kartum shakyate like that it is said so you can do it you need not do it if i say raise your hands in fact none of you raised your hands that's okay because you can raise your hand you need not raise your hand or instead of raising your hand you can raise your leg also if you want it's up to you so you can do you need not do you can do it differently because it is purusha tantra or free will but if i show you an apple and say you have to know it as orange can you do that you cannot do why because apple means you have to know only as apple because knowledge is vastu tantra knowledge has to be true to the object which you are knowing and there is no free will involved there just because you like orange you cannot say i want to know this apple only as orange can you say that you cannot say whatever is there you have to know that as it is so knowledge is always vastu tantra and there is no free will involved in knowledge in fact the free will is a deterrence why am it's a hindrance only because what happens this every vedanta class is a pramana vyapara understand that you have to look at it like that only it is not some just some class or like i told you it is not some academic study or you are not gaining some facts and all that in every vedanta class you are seeing yourself in the light of the teaching of veda how veda is is showing you your reality this is your reality means you have to see that that means the pramana vyapara is happening but at the time what is the hindrance your will and your mind only says no how is this possible this this guru is saying i am satyam jnanam anantam shuddham virajam all these words but how is it possible means that hindrance is coming from your will only correct all the uh, doubts etc are coming but then that has to be taken care of so once you have taken care of that jnanam is not dependent on your will it will take place is that clear if the knower known and means of knowledge are aligned knowledge has to take place if it still does not take place either the means of knowledge is defective or the knower has a problem because the object is as it is anyway in this case atma is always available correct at least some other object somebody can take it away <laughs> means you may not know it or somebody has built a wall in between means it is not available for perception you can say but atma is not even like that it is always with you it can never go anywhere else it is always available to you so there is no problem in the prameya or the object of knowledge and veda also as a pramana there is no problem with the veda pramana understand that there are no defects in the veda pramana veda pramana is clearly revealing to you your nature then still if the knowledge is not taking place means i have to prepare myself to receive this knowledge 
that's what all this yajna etc bhagwan give here gives here is for that purpose and that's why he explicitly says here now all this karma you do it has to end in knowledge and it will end in knowledge because it is not under your free will is that clear knowledge will take place or it has to take place when the these three things are in alignment all you have to do is you have to allow the knowledge to take place that's it you don't go and interfere in any manner let the knowledge take place it will take place and transform you also okay so with this we will see the rest of the things in the next class om purnamada purnamidam purnat purnamudachyate purnasya purnamadaya purnameva avashishyate om shanti 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 हरि ओम श्री गुरुभ्यो नमः हरि ओम